Hello and welcome to another lecture on switch mode power converters. We are continuing our lecture series on buck switching regulators. In the previous two lectures, we derived the expression for the output voltage of a buck switching regulator as VDC times T on over T. We also looked at the feedback control in a buck switching regulator. In today's lecture, we will look at the basic waveforms that we encounter in a buck converter assuming ideal and steady state conditions. So if we start with the operation during the on state, we see that when the transistor is turned on, transistor can be considered as an ideal switch for our steady state analysis. When it is turned on, then current starts to flow from the input towards the output as this diode is reverse biased. And thus the polarity across the inductor is VDC here because the supply appears here and this point is V0. Thus we can write that VDC minus V0 is equal to L times DI by DT. So I is the current that is flowing through the inductor. So from here I can calculate di by dt as vdc minus v0 divided by l. So this expression is the slope of this current flowing through the inductor. So if I were to plot this, it would look like a rising curve with a slope vdc minus v0 divided by l and this is my I naught during the T on operation. Now let's see what happens when the switch is turned off. In this case, no current flows from the supply towards the output. However, the current in an inductor cannot change instantaneously. Therefore, the inductor has to reverse the polarity across its terminals. So this effect is known as the kickback the kickback or the flyback effect in an inductor so now the current flows through this diode which is also called as a freewheeling diode and assuming a voltage of plus 1 volt across the diode with this polarity we can see that the voltage at this point of the inductor would be equal to V0 plus 1 and thus I can again write an expression of the voltage across the inductor as V0 plus 1 is equal to L times DI by DT from where I get DI by DT is equal to V0 plus 1 divided by L. So this gives me the slope of the current through the inductor during the T off state. So now I can plot a decaying curve like this where the slope of this current is given by V0 plus 1 divided by L and this is the current I0. So if I combine these two curves then we can see that the output current waveform looks something like this. It has a ripple let's call it delta i and the average value of this ripple is the output current i naught during the t on operation this current increases with the slope of vdc minus v naught over l this is during t on operation and during T off, this current decays with a slope of V0 plus 1 divided by L. You can see that these expressions are independent of the output load current. Therefore, if the output current decreases in a buck converter, these slopes should remain the same. So if the load current is decreased, then this curve would move like this and when this point 
reaches zero, the lowest point of this current ripple and the current, the output current at this point is called the critical load current. You can see that if the load current is reduced further, then this waveform will not remain continuous anymore and we would move from continuous mode of operation to discontinuous mode of operation and we'll see later in our lecture series that in the discontinuous mode of operation the transfer function is completely different and also the way that the controller the output controller works is completely different from what we have been looking during this continuous mode of operation so that's it for today's lecture in my next lecture we will continue further with some other topic related to buck converters thank you very much